Hello, hello. How's it going? Am I still getting the uh, camera blink? Oh no, is my camera blinking still? I'm uh, I kind of think my um, what is it called? Cap cap capture card? Capture card? Yeah. Um, I think it overheats, and if I just leave it plugged in. It doesn't actually like turn off when the computer turns off. So it just stays on and I think it just gets hot and then this happens. I tried restarting my computer beforehand and of course there's Windows updates and all the stuff that comes with that. Um, well, so uh, today we are going to continue doing some Tari. Um, well, let's go ahead and bounce right over here. We are doing specifically Igui. Um, I want to play around with Igui today. There is a blog post that Lucas wrote. A um, bunch of effort went into this integration. But for the most part, I think we're kind of, there's not going to be too much to figure out. So it'll be a little bit of tinkering, a little bit of experimenting but not too much troubleshooting and figuring stuff out, I hope. Um, because we kind of have the whole, we have a potential app that we can just try. So we're, we'll probably end up just walking right through this blog post here. Um, the Tari eGUI is built on top or uses the eGUI library, which is an immediate mode GUI. Um, do they have any, uh, top level thing here? Hi, hi, yes. It is written in Rust, which is pretty interesting. Um, and web native and game engine. And what's interesting about this is The way it renders, and and th this is I was I was trying to find a explanation of this. I don't see. I thought they had an explanation of it. Um, maybe maybe I just listened to it on a podcast or something like that. Um, we'll open up the web demo for a minute, but the, the, the specific key here is the immediate mode. Um, the way that you typically render on web pages is you push stuff up to the DOM and anytime you want to change something, you tell the DOM or, or you, you make a JavaScript instruction or something that changes a piece of it. So you're basically like you have you can think of the, the DOM and your web page as the state. And you're mutating that state. So you're changing the DOM. You're saying, hey, well, I want this piece to go away and I want a new piece to come up back in place of it. Um, so you end up having to like manage that state that is the DOM. Um, document, ob doc document object model is uh, um, the whole web page. And now we have frameworks that help us with that. Um, so we used to use J, I mean, jQuery is still pretty popular, uh, but it was even more popular, you know, a decade ago. And that was basically just functions to like mutate the state of the DOM. Um, but now we have frameworks that help us manage that. And we are just, um, you know, kind of building on top of that. But at the end of the day, we're still mutating the state. And the way in the immediate mode interface works is on every frame, so you can think of like a game, you have uh, FPS, frames per second. Every time it draws a new frame, it is drawing the whole screen every time. So you're not mutating state, you're instructing it like, for this frame, draw this state. And it makes interacting, or it, it makes changing the page easier because you are not having to deal with the state, you are just redrawing it every time. 
so it's it's always like a um it's almost like a serverless situation or like a like a stateless server where you you're just running a function every time um obviously there's you know performance trade-offs the you you need to have compute that can actually do the render every time um games are a little bit more of an issue than uh, something like a web pages but it's something to keep in mind um at the end of the day though it's just a different way to think about things um and we, we've got enough layers on top of both you know all these different ways to interact with a page or an app um so the the general pain of mutating to the dom is sort of abstracted away um so some of the benefits of this are less um noticeable when you're working with web pages but this is pretty much the way that games do it um i guess we can look at the web demo so for the most part i think this is all web it's rust and i think it compiles down to wasm And here, see, what they're trying to do is 60 hertz would be redrawing every second 60 times. Um, the problem is we end up having to like redo some of the things that the DOM typically handles for us. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find, I think this is WebGL, but I'm not 100% certain. And you can see we've got a bunch of integrations and such with it already. Okay. Um, I guess there is a web GPU API already. Interesting. There's a bevy integration that is a game engine written in Rust that I have played around with. Um, okay. Well, hey, Tony. Good to see you. Happy Friday. So I think this will be interesting to play around with. Um, uh, Trade-offs, pros and cons, um, kind of TBD, I guess. It's going to be a different way to interact with and create your uh, front end because most of our code is going to be in Rust. Um, so, you know, that's a, it's either a pro or a con depending on, uh, you know, the person working on it. So let's go ahead and give it a try. The I think this setup is pretty easy. And then we're mostly defining effectively our DOM in Rust. So let's go ahead and start up a new um, Tari project. I'm already in my um, GitHub. Or in my uh, uh, folder with all of my other Tari stuff. I guess last so last time we ran last time I ran uh create Tari app we had to use it through PowerShell so let's go ahead and just do that. Um I don't the bash integration wasn't working with the with new shell. I think that's what it was. Uh so the the term or the shell that I use is called new shell. Um, it is new shell dot sh. I would uh. Well, that's not what I wanted. I would uh, recommend checking it out. But there are, yeah, it's still. What 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 do they say? Um. It doesn't say it's in beta or anything. It's newer, and it does work cross-platform, which is nifty. But there are a little bit of, the, the, there are instructions that people tend to give that are, I mean, we specifically say bash here. It's bash-like, I guess I would describe it, um, with some fancy stuff on top. But not all bash stuff works, So I, and I, I don't think this actually worked with it, um, partly because sh 
and I think Bash here is um we're kind of expecting that to be used for Mac. So we'll use the PowerShell command. That'll work fine. Um, let's go ahead and run that. We're going to call it Tari Igui. Um, I don't think we're going to end up having any actual front end. So I don't think we need to do, I think we can be reliant completely on cargo. I'm going to try it because I haven't actually tried it yet. There we go. Let's go ahead and close that. Okay. How's your Friday going so far, Tony? So we've got, um, we actually do have an HTML file here. I don't know how we end up hooking that part of it up. Um, we are getting Rust Analyzer is running. Hopefully we don't get too many skip frames here. Unofficially a day off. Nice. Can't beat that. A little bit of rest. Um, I don't think we're going to get too many drop frames because I have increased the priority of the process. OBS, so the, the render process should be uh, getting priority. So hopefully... As Rust compiles, it's not going to give us issues. But anytime Rust Analyzer runs, that's going to do a um, cargo check, I think it is. Um, and anytime we run it in the terminal, too, it's going to also be doing that. So it can be a little bit rough on the compute. So we're going to look at cargo.toml and According to this, we need to add Tari Igui as a dependency. I don't think we actually need Serde or anything. Um, build dependencies. I think we still do need that build dependency. And then I'm pretty sure this is all we really need to do for our setup. And here we, so this actually comes in with a built-in command to kind of show you how to use it. I don't need it. So I'm just gonna, um, yeah, we do want, I think we still do want that on the top, but I don't care about the command. So I'm gonna do this. Oh, interesting. Why was it trying to install? Um, I don't know if we'll be able to see it too much in here. Once we get a little bit deeper into Rust to this, that extension flowistry it's on the newer side of things I, th I think it came out a handful of weeks ago um it does i don't even know if i'm going to be able to describe it let's go to the page when you click on certain pieces of your code it's actually going to how do they describe it focus board it's going to basically like make the pieces that that is a uh, variable is not related to lighter. So it's more obvious how th mm. it gives you a better indication of where that variable is used further down the line. So it seems pretty nifty. Um, I haven't really used it too much and we'll see if how well it's working with our uh, with Antari. That is an interesting plugin, yeah. Um, so we'll, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it ends up going. Custom. I don't think I need any proto or any features right now. Get rid of that. I thought we run. Isn't there a twenty twenty two edition? I don't remember. Okay, let's go ahead and do a, um, do a cargo check. Ah, 
Um, oh yeah, we don't have a package JSON. I haven't actually used Tari without Node yet. How do we start? Um, development, development cycle, cargo. Okay, cargo Tari dev. Cargo Tari dev. Provider short name is not allowed. Oh, that's a new one. Um, I don't know. Okay, so while that is running, we can skim ahead in the blog post a little bit. And um, we added this. So eGUI should start being um, handled, I guess is the word. Um, we need to implement the eGUI eframe app trait. So all of this is a bunch of functions that are building up the app. And here, okay. Let's put it in the window and show it in the Tari application. It's kind of interesting that it's all in the setup. Okay, create window. Password checker. It, are we still seriously? Oh, press any layers that is running. This is, so this is the downside of having the plugins. Certain functions can only, they, they do a system file lock. So only one uh, process can access it. And anytime we save or change stuff in VS Code, Rust Analyzer runs down on the bottom there. You can see it doing the spinny thing. That sometimes does system file locks. So if we run another process, we get blocked because we are waiting for that file lock on the package cache. I changed my cargo.toml, Rust Analyzer is rerunning the check, and that's what's doing the package lock. Um, we actually, kind of surprised it didn't, hasn't created a target folder yet. Okay, so the, there we go, now it's finally running. So here's the create window and wait for the window to be closed with the user data. So where do we pull this in? I'm presuming we can do this in a separate file. 2021 is the latest edition. Good to know. What was before that? Was it 2018? No, it's 2021. Time, man. <laughs> I tell ya. <laughs> yeah, 2018, okay. Uh, <laughs> then 2015, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Every three years. Um, okay, so how are we bringing this in? We've got uh, the plugin builder. And like, it seems like we're just using these directly. Login layout. It 
so we're making an impl. I presume we could probably do this in a different file, but maybe we just copy and paste this all into the main file and play around with it first. Um, but it seems like we're basically doing it right here. I wonder if some of this too, if we're able to, like this makes sense. Create a window. I think that makes sense. If we handle the windowing in the setup slash in the main function, that feels like it makes sense to me, or at least the initial window. Um, I'm presuming that other windows could, similar to our WebView JavaScript side of things, open up their own windows. Um, we might not be able to do that yet, but it feels like initial window makes sense here. Some of this stuff, I wonder if we can actually shift. Spawn move. So Rx is coming from login layout. Okay. We might be able to shift some of it out. Is Ego using its own UI or is it based on another crate? Um, here, I could drop the links. I didn't drop them in here before, but it is using this crate. Um, it's an immediate mode GUI. The high level is uh, rather than having a web view where you do the, the sort of the normal web implementation where you have a DOM and you're mutating the DOM and you have abstractions on top of that, like React, that help you do that. Um, this runs using Gluten, I believe, and WebGL, WebGPU, depending on which one you use, and re-renders the page on every frame. And that's what the immediate mode means. So it's very similar to how video games work, which is why um, this is the case. So one of the, one of the things you could potentially use this for is um, obviously web pages could be a use case, um, but you could you could do, use it for a, a something like a HUD on a game because um, it it feels very web like the formatting and css are gonna not be there um but trade-offs so it's actually rather than using the system web view we're actually using a gluten based window Which is whoop, 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 whoop. right there. Yep, yeah, no problem. So Tari ends up helping us out with the the way Tari is set up is it's built on top of um, Rye and Tao. Um, Rye handles the web view. Tao handles the windows. I think I got that right. Um, no, wait, am I mixing that up? Here, let's go to this one. Sorry, apps slash rye. No, no, not. All right, so we got we got something rolling here finally. Yeah, so rye is the web view. Um, the reason I paused for a second there was we've got rye is the thing that's actually creating the gluten window.
So I'm curious how that's implemented, actually. I don't know. Um, but it's a combination of this and Tau. And Tau is primarily the window creation part of things. And then Tari itself takes these two lower level libraries, adds some helpers um, specifically around like code signing, updating, bundling, um, the like communication between the Rust side of things and your web view, um, and bundles that all up for you. So what's interesting about that architecture is we are able to um, we've, we've got these pieces that we can actually swap out parts of it like in this case instead of using a web view we're swapping out and using a gluten window um, so it's an interesting architecture where we have a lot of control and flexibility in actually Potentially, at some point in the future, you're having other options besides just the web view and now a gluten window. Come on, Google. Okay, so let's see. Um, build run custom build command. Found an unknown configuration field. It's using the using a CLI version that is newer than Tari build and is incompatible. Hmm. Okay. So let's take a look. Maybe we don't. I'm assuming we need Tari build. It doesn't specifically say it here. Okay, so there's an eGUI Tau integration. So we must be swapping it at the RI level, but it's an integration with eGUI that enables it, I believe. Um, it doesn't say, any, do we have an example or anything? Now let's check this out. So this has got the full thing. Um, we can actually copy. Let's go ahead and just copy this right away. Um, I'm fine just using this whole thing here. Now does that change builder? Sorry, builder. Oh, we weren't importing it. I, I killed my imports. Yeah. I wonder if that's part of the issue. When I say import, I mean use too much uh, JavaScript. I'm guessing that's what it is. Let's look at the examples. eGUI and eFrame. This crate contains example code for eGUI. I'm not sure what the difference between these are. I'm guessing this is probably the one we want to look at. So we can say Tau wraps the web view with the system window. Tau does the window. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I guess that's one way you can think about it. Tau Tau handles the window itself, and then there's the content within inside the window. Um, and Rai is generally the thing that's handling that, and Rai does the web view within the window. And I think we can call it a system window. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with stating it that way. The you have 
you have options when you're doing the window. So Tile exposes options up to Tari where you can turn off the native decorations. Um, you can do transparency. And you can enable the web view or the whatever's being rendered to still execute those native functions like minimizing and closing. Um, but at the base of it, it's a, uh, um, you know, like it's an OS specific window. So the, like what's native, if you're using the native built-in decorations for the window, it's going to be different between systems. So Mac is going to be different, look different than win Windows. Um, presuming you just leave all the, the default native decorations there. All right, so we're still getting we're still getting that. I imagine that we are missing. Whoa. Okay, so this demo is a little bit more involved. E-frame. Okay, I think this is more what I meant. No. Main Tari Builder and Volcandler. I think this is more what I'm expecting as a open native window. Mm. And this is what I was saying before, where it feels like it makes sense that we can abstract some of this out. Um, there's a run here. Run a window event. Oh, no, that's not it. Generate context. Here, generate handler. So this handler um, points to this Tari command. And we do this setup here. So after all the setup happens, we run a window event. And I'm guessing that this is listening native options so this is being called somehow to open and i'm presuming i don't see any reason that we would not open the window open native window. So this is pointing to this. It's not calling it. Oh, wait, invoke handler. Generate. All right, I got to look at my commands for the other. I can't remember if, whoop, I just opened the same thing. We need to go up one level so we can see our full playground. Let's go ahead and close this one. So last time we did, last two times we did, uh, we worked with a sidecar, which is now called a an external bin. And we, as part of that, did some commands. Okay, so invoke handler, yep, generate handler. Generate handler. Yep. So it's the same thing. It's the same macro. It's not actually, I don't think it's actually running it. Um, so I'm still not catching how this is opening this window. Let's go ahead and just copy and paste this though. Ooh, no, wrong one. Go into eGUI. Mm. So last time I we were having issues with Rust Analyzer not actually running. 
And I think what is actually happening is, where did it say no? I missed it. I don't actually have anything at the root as far as cargo goes. So Rust Analyzer is saying, hey, there's no cargo.toml or anything here. Like, how do I, how do I analyze? It was working when we were opening it up just in this folder because it has that context. Um, all right, so let's try running this again with this updated code. We should double check the, yeah, we don't even have a, cargo without tumble in that folder. Features, dependencies. Yeah, like, a, this, I think this is specifically ego -y stuff. I don't know that it has anything to do with the plugin itself. Because we don't, I'm presuming we don't actually need to have eGUI as a dependency because it should be coming in through this. <clears throat> so we might want to update this, um, this readme to make that a little bit more clear. Okay, unknown field, expected one of scope, all read file exists. I mean, I think we've got the newest, yeah, we've got the newest, supposedly, sorry, build. In the, we can try the cargo update in the SRC, Tari. I don't know that that's actually gonna help us out. I don't know, I suppose it could be using an old version of Tari. Does that use a global when we are running this? The first time you're running this, I'm just I don't know if this is actually global or not. All of our quick starts are not anything to do with that. Yeah, okay. So I think it's expecting a global and I don't have, I probably have a like super old global. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, it's gotta be it. And there really isn't, as far as I know, a great... I mean, I suppose we could probably put the CLI as... Like, put it in the cargo.toml. Um, so we don't have to install it as a global. What is it? Dev... Not gonna help me out, are you? Cargo dev dependencies. Okay, so it's that.
Atari CLI equals Guessing that's it. Yep. Okay. We'll let that finish running. Um, I kind of want it updated anyways. So I, I think that's potentially part of the issues that it didn't have this because we've got updated builder and such. Um, so this might not actually work what we have here. I think I'm going to roll back to what we have in the blog post. And do this. So this is specifically enabling it. Maybe, maybe we, we try just enabling it first and then we'll go from there. Um, I'm guessing what's going to happen is that we just paste everything from the blog post at the bottom of this. See if that works and then we can go from there. Oh, man, adding this CLI takes forever. Have you tried the, where, where are we? Have you tried the uh, channel point redemptions? Give some of those a go. We did a bunch of streams setting all that up. We'll probably do a little bit more, but it was speaking of WebGL. We got a 3D WebGL scene rolling. Uh, almost there. I think too, so this is actually running in native windows. Um, now that WSL2, I believe, has the support needed for GUIs that we could run WSL2 and Tari. I don't think you could before, um, but I haven't actually tried yet. I suspect that's potentially going to be faster, though. Um, so that might be something we want to play around with in the future. Oh my goodness, this is a lot of dependencies to build. All right, so we need we need the eframe and e GUI. And then these are a whole bunch of functions. Load an image. And so this is just loading one of the icons, which we should have. It's got fam font family stuff built in. Add a submit button. So I, I think basically we end up using this login layout. I don't see any other we will have to bring that in as a use. But I think we could potentially abstract this login layout into a separate file. And pull that into the main .rs. We're so close. Come on. <laughs> And I think when this is done too, um, I'm going to go back to just opening up just this project. So we get some Rust Analyzer help. So I'll go ahead and close that now. Almost there. Cargo Tari.
Yeah, so this there's this thread spawn. I don't know if we're going to be able to abstract that out at all. And the it would be nice if we could abstract some of this out. But I don't know if we're going to be able to. Like this this feels odd in the setup. But also we only have like one window or one page, I guess. Um so maybe that's not that big of a deal. Most of this here is going to be working with effectively the eGUI, I believe. So this is gonna be We'd be able to look at the eGUI docs for this. Um, eFrame and eGUI is coming in. Got a channel. So channel is a standard. There's a texture handle. So I think rather than doing like CSS, we end up doing more of the video game-esque texture. We apply textures to things, is how I understand it. Um, I mean, it's basically like a WebGL context, so I suppose that makes sense. In previous streams, we've done a bunch of playing around with the textures. We can actually, um, this should work. See if I typed it in right. Is my Is the overlay not running? That would be sad. Here, let me check that. I mean, supposedly, let's turn it on and off again. I wonder if something, I, some ID or something expired. Yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's a bunch of that. All right, let's, let's see if this works now. Oh, is it uh is it actually case sensitive? No. What did I break? <laughs> I guess uh I guess you can't do it. I wonder if a token or something expired. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Sad day. Okay. Um, it's fine. Wow, this is still going. I tell ya. Okay. So, this is using E frame. Um, there we go. Yeah, look, look at, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I was a little bit behind. Okay, so we should be able to now do, um, well, let's go up directory. Let's do cargo tari dev. Whoop, we gotta open our code window. Code. Because we closed that as well. Okay, hopefully this should work now. Um, we do have a bunch of things compiled already, and that's probably from the previous Rust Analyzer run. Um, that's running. They do share the same like cache. Um, 
So Rust Analyzer should get the hit a file lock. I don't think it's actually going to say it. But as we're building, the build results will be used by Rust Analyzer. Builder not found. Okay, so we do need to specify Tari in some way here. I'm going to, because I deleted it already. Look at our templates here and just grab one of the Um, I'm guessing it's probably in base. Cargo tumble. I'm guessing we need that. I think that is part of our issue here. Oh. Oh. Okay. I just did. I kill it. No, I didn't. <laughs> Starship is not happy with me doing that. There we go. So this shell is new shell. The this look comes from Starship, which is also Rust. Um, well, that's. Redoing its thing, starship.rs. And that's part of what gives us the uh, um, this nice look. We get version numbers and such in there. Um, Git. Yeah, we're on the main branch with all the nerd fronts. All right, why are you blocked now? Is it still Rust Analyzer going? Yeah. So we might end up just copying this. Log an app. This is like this looks like a smaller version of what's on the in the blog post so i think we've got sort of this minimal thing which should compile um i don't think we're gonna get any windows when that happens because we don't have anything creating the window um if we copy this we get some of the egoe eframe stuff but it's not as full featured um, as what we'd see here. I'm guessing it's pretty much just going to be the two input fields is what it looks like. Because we've got enter your password and submit. If we copy the all the rest of the stuff out of this blog post, then I'm guessing we're going to get the icon and such as well. Oh my goodness. There we go. Now we're compiling. So the I I would love to get a computer upgrade in here because doing this kind of stuff, especially well streaming, it's pretty compute heavy. And I've I mean I've got an i nine. It is in a laptop, so we you know we get mobile thermal issues. But it's only 8th or 9th gen i9. So we probably see a performance boost if um, we did some upgrading. And now with all the new stuff coming out, both the AMD and Intel chips and the new GPUs, 
I, th I think I'm gonna probably <laughs> upgrade it the uh, some sometime uh, hopefully early next year. Build a little uh, probably Windows box still. Um, I'm, I also have a, a Mac Air on the side here, so I tend to do dev between all three environments: Mac, Windows here, and then uh, WSL for Linux. Um, I don't actually do a boot into Linux at all. I pretty much just do the uh, do the WSL. We're almost there. Ten more to go. It's interesting that we're getting WebView com. <laughs> Excuse me. The weather changed here, so uh, everybody kind of gets colds and um, in, in my part of the world, when the weather flips, we've we've definitely entered fall. Okay, mis mismatched types. All right, so now our process here is done. So Rust Analyzer picked up, and now that's, what is that? I failed to run build scripts of some packages. So you can see how they kind of end up fighting, basically. This is running a cargo check. That's doing its own thing. Um, I think just to get things rolling here, let's just turn this plug on off right now because it's not. Can I do it from here? No. Um, Rust Analyzer, where are you? We're going to just toggle that off for the moment. Oh, it's going to search. I don't need the search at all. Uh, yeah, we'll just turn it off for now. Yeah, of course. Reload required. Sure. Go for a reload. I'm fine just letting it run here, and we'll turn it on once we sort of get things in a steady state, and it would it will actually be helpful. All right, so while that's building... Unused return value. That must be used. I thought that's what it told me to do. Expected. Consider using a semicolon here. I wonder if that's just not in a state where it's copy and pasteable. All right, let's let's give this a shot. And we'll try to run this. I'm assuming one of these should be runnable. Could not compile. Tari Igui. No file at path. Hmm. So this one is actually doing a generate context based on this example demo. Which is not going to work for us because we don't have a file at that location. Um, so it looks like the default is just this. And it's looking for it in srctari slash tari.conf. So we do have an unused variable. That's not a big deal. It should still compile. On line 15. And I don't really see anything else that is going to give us an issue. Okay. And 
look at that. So this is our, and you, you like you can see web view. I'm presuming web view and CSS here, and this is the additional window that opens up that is gluten based. Um, we can't right click it. We don't have the dev tools because it's not a web view. This one is a web view and we can right click it and open up the dev tools only while we're in dev mode. So once we build it, the ability to do that is gonna go away. Um, but we can't do that here. So we can't get to the web view dev tools because there is no web view. Um, so it seems like they are in this, in that specific case, we're creating a new window. So it's not using the main window there. So let's go ahead and try this. Oh, that's nice. The wrap, I dig it. Doing a uh, code code wrap would be really nice on mobile. Um, so we might need to play around a little bit with these pieces that we're copying and pasting, but because there's not a way to copy the whole shebang, because all of our code blocks here are split up. So we got login layout, we got that. Um, I don't know. We can we can go ahead and just run. And as we are copying and pasting pieces in here, it'll tell us the trait eGUI eFrame app is not implemented. Um, so we've copied this one and it's saying that eGUI app is not implemented which probably happens in one of these. I'm guessing it happens in this update. And you can see here it called each time the UI needs repainting. So anytime there's an update, then it repaints the whole UI. So we got a bunch of warnings, but unused variables, not a big deal. And we are getting a window now. And this is still actually rendering. You can see it's empty. It is still creating a main window. So we might try to replace that main window completely and see what happens. Um, Let's see, we got the logo and header, put in the textures. UI with layout. I think probably this piece here is what is missing that fills in our rich text stuff. So here you can see a user. And like, see, this feels like it should be all contained within something. In the last one, all right. Asset not found, compiling, expected item found keyword let. So some issue with our texture.
And I think that's part of what I was saying where I feel like All right, does it say something where we um, need to define it within? So implement the trait, define some helper functions. It could very well be that we are expected to put this all in that impl. It doesn't specifically say that. But that is my guess. All right, not a member of trait, not a member of trait. Well, that's unfortunate. To use the eGUI, we need to implement that. So define a struct, implement eframe app. Well, we are missing something. I'm going to see if the main repo has an example for it. Splash screen, sidecar, resources, parent window. Don't see anything. And this Tari Igui, it has demos, but they all seem to be very much related to running with Igui, not necessarily this plugin. And like we, it looks like we can potentially use the WGPU renderer, which is pretty nifty. So the WGPU is the new spec for what WebGL was doing before. Um, I think is, I don't know if WebGL used the GPU. I think it did, but WebGPU I think is, pushes more of the work on the GPU. Okay, so it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like we can potentially copy any of these examples. So this was pretty much working. We had an impl and an update. Impl update, and then we've got these functions that are used. Where's texture used? So I don't know if we actually need these in this impl. I don't know where these are expected to be. I mean, we could probably chuck them in the setup for right now. Can't imagine we're going to have issues there. Not found in the scope. Okay, maybe we are. All right. OK, 
Okay, let's pull a bunch of this out. And let's see if we can just get a smaller piece of it working. So this will give us a window. Let's scroll down so we can see it rebuilding. Now we just have a bunch of unused warnings, which is okay. This was those helper functions. Now that we deleted that, it's not actually gonna be doing those. Okay, so now we're getting some windows. It's still this and this. Um, that sign in is the gluten window with nothing in it. So we need to I'm guessing add these. So UI, UI, UI. It looks like we we need to do all of these. So where are we specifying the UI? Here we've got a let texture and here we've got a let texture. All of these take an input of UI. Within here, we've got a context and a frame. We're setting a window. Uh, okay. Adds a panel that covers the remainder of the screen. Our layout will be top down and centered and here. That's the key that we, I think we were missing. We will start adding elements here in the next sections. I didn't presume to actually read through the whole set of code, and that's why we were. Um, that's where we were getting. That's where we were falling off. So we'll do this. I don't really need this anymore. You can see here that's our URI variable. That was the piece that we were missing. So I'm, I'm presuming that we I don't see any other code comments in these. So I'm presuming it is all going to be here. Um, now I'm losing track of which ones I'm copying and pasting top down. UI with layout. So we just did a text field. Now that, and then the next one. Okay. Use of undeclared crate or module PNG. We couldn't read that, <clears throat> so we can't find this best path specified. Um, so it is looking for icons 32 by 30.png. right there so where are you 32 by 32 that looks right um we might need to do something like that also format why are you not formatting there's no formatter installed um let's go ahead and turn on our rust analyzer again i don't know if it's gonna make us reload it doesn't seem like it there you go Use of undeclared create or module PNG. Fine. Couldn't read SRC icons that. So 
so I wonder if it is expecting icons to be in this. So I've got in my assets a Tari SVG. I don't know if I can actually do SVG here, but we could try assets Tari.svg. So that's still getting an issue. Ah, uh, now we're getting the file lock of the build directory. Because it is indexing. You can see it's running the cargo check via source analyzer, as well as doing the indexing. So it might be that we don't need this at the beginning because it's still doing SRC slash assets. We're struggling on that path right now. We're starting to get the um, inlays. Rust analyzer, when it processes a Rust file, um, part of what it can do is add inlays. So that's that's this. I didn't actually specify it, but it's saying, hey, Based on this context, I understand this value to be an F32, um, which helps because a lot of what I've found working with Rust is getting all the types to line up. And part of that effort then ensures that, you know, we're, when you build it, it's actually going to run. I don't have runtime errors. Um, but also we do a lot of like taking data in one form and turning it into another. So being able to carry through and see these types helps with that. Um, oh, okay. There we go. I was like, oh, well, it's still compiling here. Okay. So we can't read. The system cannot find the path specified. Now, I don't know if it cares about this. Yeah, and that is a PNG decoder, supposedly. It seems like it is actually looking in SRC, though, which is also interesting. So I might have to do something like this. 32 by 32.png. Hi, Kitty. Ugh. Go ahead, sit. You gonna say hi? No, you just want to be scratched. <laughs> You can see the little whiskers. <laughs> All right. Use of undeclared crate. Could not compile. Okay. So it seems to be finding it now, but we have an undeclared crate. Um. And we don't have any notes about PNG in here, so we will have to. Okay. Requires the PNG dependency. So let's do, I, I don't know if it is, well, can we just remove it for right now? Um, where is this error? So 
a reader. So it's doing a whole texture here and it's doing the logo and heading. We might be able to just comment this whole blob out for the moment and see if we can get a compile. So this was loading the PNG, reading it, getting it as a texture and actually setting it via this function, the logo and heading, which we have here. And that's when it does the style mutation stuff. Oh, that cat hair in my uh there we go okay main window gluten window we got some drop downs howdy unlock sweet so i'm not gonna worry about the png i don't really care about getting that in as a uh, that create in and using the icon and such so i'm gonna just take that off for right now um i am curious though about this window stuff so it is we're doing a new rye plugin and then we're creating a window i don't know if we need a main window my curiosity is if we are to remove. I'm going to open up previous stuff we've done with this in my playground. Um, I think in the tray app we have a, a an example of, which I think will still be current, of hiding the main window. So I'm wondering if I might be able to steal some of that code where we can get the main window and actually replace it. So here we're actually we're, we're hiding it. So this gets the main window via an unwrap and then we're hiding it. Um, when we click wait for the window to be closed with the user data on another thread. You don't need to spawn a thread when using an async command. Okay. So we're creating a window. based on native options. Native options is setting some window defaults, it looks like. Um, and app creator is what is tying it back into our login layout. So if we've got a Rye plugin that's setting this New app handle gets a handle to the application instance. So this would give us a window. And so this is where these um, inlays start being helpful. Window is giving us a, a window rye event loop message. Not sure what that does, but. Um, I don't know if we can actually replace it. We, we could probably hide it. It would be nice not to have it at all though. And that's the part that I'm not sure about. So right plugin. You add the Atari plugin using Atari Runtime Rye Plugin Builder. So like if we would add this here, this is just gonna hide that main window. Go 
and run that again. So when it starts up, um, I should probably tr change the config so they all start up in the center here. Um, but when it starts up, it should hide the, the main window right away and we'll just see this password. Okay. It all happened on this side. Let's go ahead and um, update our config. We have the plugin installed, so we should have the helpers here. I think it's center, yeah. True. So if we change the config, the file watcher does pick up on that. So you should see it start rebuilding. And hopefully the window shows up right up there and we can see we are in dev mode. So it's a little bit slower. That main window opened up center and then it was hidden. And then this one opened up on the side. So completely different context. Um, native options. Can we do a uh, center? I mean, we've got the default default. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Create window is a label, app creator, title, native options. So native options is what we're doing here. Um, native options comes from Tari Igui. Only a single native window is currently supported. Good to know. So there is this validate the password. This is the list of users. Password checker is piped into this. And this should be handling it but it seems that there might be an issue. So when enter is pressed is when it should handle it. So blah, 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 enter. So if a text field is lost, focus. Doesn't seem to be handling it. And part of this too is, I guess we need to put in some debug statements. Um, Cause we're basically, we, we need to see if we're getting to that code block for it to be disappearing. Um, And some of that might have been handled in the piece that we removed. Logo and heading. Hello, welcome. But, ooh, this, I'm gonna butcher this, I'm sorry. Besson Steel Deeb? Besson Steel Deeb. I feel like there's breaks in there, but I'm not, I'm not seeing them. <laughs> Anyways, welcome. Welcome. Let me know uh, if I can more properly pronounce your handle. Um, so there, yeah, there, there seems to be some issue with the, <laughs> it's German. Okay. I mean, I know. Um, I'm Dishin. <laughs> Is that right? It's been a while. Broomstick thief. Nice. I I definitely appreciate the uh, 
the <laughs> the German nature to just like take words and go that's the sound it makes in my head too um <laughs> I've got a bunch of uh German ancestors my grandma on my mother's side came from Germany so I've I've got a few years of German and in school and just talking with family members. Second goodbye. But not very well. Like first grader maybe. I guess that's not even uh, relevant. Um, like a three-year-old level of <laughs> talking probably. <laughs> okay. So the password checker doesn't seem to be working. Um, we can dig into that. I'm, I am curious about this, the window thing though. I think, uh, we'll play around with the window a little bit. Um, come on up. If you want attention, you come up. Come on. Kitty has to say hi again. So... We are currently hiding the main window and via the, the handle that we're grabbing. What language? Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm still thinking German. <laughs> I'm writing in English. <laughs> um, uh, this is Rust. Um, we are using a framework called Tari, which the back end of it is written in Rust, and you can use it to make desktop apps. So right now we are looking at the main function here, which uses the Tari builder, and within our setup, <laughs> you were thinking the same? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, context switches are funny sometimes. Um, within the setup, we are creating a second window here, which is using eGUI via the Tari plugin and creating a gluten-based window, which is rendering a native um, WebGL win or uh, WebGL frame within the window, and that's instead of web view, which is kind of the default in Tari right now. Um, so if, if I would take this hide off and we go ahead and save that, it'll rerun and open. It'll rerun and open. Come on, you can do it. There we go. This window is a web view. And this window has a um, gluten context, I guess. And you'd be able to theoretically um, communicate between them. There is this. I shouldn't have closed that because it now kills that process. But um, there is um, a comment. Somewhere around here, Rye plugin. One of these said that you can only have one native window. Native options here. Only a single native window is currently supported. So, can, can, is this doing anything with the move? Rx received, Rx is coming from that. Can we just create two windows? I'm kind of curious. I don't know if native options is saying you can only specify native options for a single window or if it's actually saying, hey, we can only have one native window, which feels like a slightly confusing. Yeah, okay. I mean, we're doing hacky things, so let's doing hacky things 
Uh, this is saying that we are creating this value. What is this called? Struct. It's a struct. We are creating the struct, and then we are handing it off to this function. Um, so it's moving into the context of this uh, create window. Um, and then it ends up being owned by that. And if we try to reuse it, uh, there's we get into is it ownership issues? Well, um, we've moved it into that closure. I'm I've done I've been doing Rust for a while, but not enough of it to like be super familiar with all of the terminology. And that compiler is so helpful. So I feel like I can do a lot more than I actually should be able to. So if you've not written Rust, don't be scared to. So we're still getting a value used after move. Uh, move occurs because eGUI app has a login layout, which does not implement the copy trait. So we can only do it once. So login layout new, if we would create a new one of these, I, we, I mean, we might end up having to do the same with the password checker too. Not the end of the world though. And this, I don't too much care about the communication. So I'm going to ignore the thread RX stuff. Um, and we're going to do this. So essentially what we're doing now is creating separate structs, passing it in a separate create window and just seeing if we can get a second window happening. Yep. Same, same issue with the password checker. We are moving it into that closure. So we lose the option to take any type of ownership of it. It basically like moves out of scope and we're not able to use it anymore. Um, where is password password checkers? Two, two, there we go. Yeah, and this is saying, um, this isn't actually used because we're spawning off moving the RX into here and we haven't done it for the second one yet. So we could actually do, oof. There we go. Um, okay, we have two windows. So it seems that we only have the ability to create one window. We can try adding this as well, but it might not make a difference. I don't think it would. So I'm not sure why. It would be nice to know why. That's something we could potentially dig in in the future. Um, we're probably coming up close to time. Going almost uh, coming up on two hours at this point. Um, but it seems like we can only do one window. And I don't see a way to change that, that situation. So the only other thing I would be curious about is if we can replace the main window with a web view and that has a web view and only use the gluten based one. Um, Cause I think that would be a stronger use case. Like the reason, one of the reasons I would potentially use this would be to not have a web view at all. Um, the binary might be a little bit bigger. I don't know. I don't know how big these binaries end up being with uh, 
the eGUI implementation. Um, but I believe it ends up being all native and we don't have the web view. So like if you're willing to take on that trade-off, I think it would probably make sense to completely embrace it. So we've got, we got an app handle. Um, I'm guessing the app handle is the thing that here we're using it to create the window. Can we just give it a window instead? So here we're doing a new, let's check out some of this stuff. So right plugin, we're giving it an app handle here. We're creating a window. If we look at the examples, um, we are Window options, so that must be all the eGUI stuff, yeah. eGUI new window. Demo app windows? Hmm. So running this would open up all the demos. You get a whole bunch of windows, it looks like. Mobile UI, desktop UI, show windows. Um, not seeing anything in there that's gonna help us out. What about it in here? This is E-Frame, and it's not using Tori at all here. E-frame native options. And some of this might have to do with the like main thread. Cause there's, you need to sort of, I think there's issues with um, web views wanting to own the main thread or something of that sort. Um, Hey, GUI handle. Okay, so this one is doing, we're just straight away getting a, giving it a new app handle. And then we run an event on a window event, it'll print out when the window is open. So if we, If we click a button that says open native window, it is going to create a new window. So that's that's what we were missing before when you were looking at this. It's just built directly into um, the index.html. We can, base, or, uh, based on one of the features that you set in your cargo.toml, opt into, I think it's opt-in only, um, putting some of the um, Tari API functions on the window object in JavaScript. So you can invoke them directly without actually having to do any JavaScript. So this is invoking a command via the web view, which runs this function and opens up a new window that is an eGUI frame. So I'm still not seeing anything to actually replace the main view. And I have a feeling that, um, I just realized her song or a sound or a music stop. Um, I have a feeling maybe we can't replace the main one.
it might be a situation where if you're using Tari, there's an expectation that you are using a web view. If you want to use egoe directly and only, maybe there's some expectation that you're dropping down and only using Rai or uh, um, Tau. Because all of these are just creating windows. As does this, creating a window. Tari eagerly released. I wonder if this is box new. I wonder if this is the reason it wasn't being triggered. There might be that window title. It might be checking that window title or something like that. Because our window here is not called that. I gotta imagine that that's probably what it is. Hi, hi, kitty. Well, let us double check on the issues. Uh, hi, yes. Come on. Press security stuff. Ah, uh, you're getting cat hair in my face. I'm going to look at the code real quick here. I don't. So there's a, a new build main thread web view ID map create window channel it kind of feels like there's the expectation to have a web view So there's the center, center is the window. Now is this in window getter? No, in a window. So they're in the window impl. We have a whole bunch of things that we can do. So. I'm guessing this create window returns a window. So if we say, are we already calling a window? Yep. Yeah. Call it, say gluten window. So we are getting pretty much the same, t a similar type of window to the, our previous slot window. So I'm guessing what we can then do is say, um, gluten window dot center. And then that will also center the gluten window. So when this reruns, we'll get the main window moved into the center based on our config in Tare Conf. And then this will shift the secondary window that's opened up. There we go. So we've got some options on actually modifying that secondary window. And most of them are using this send event, which I'm presuming ties back into macro stuff. And Tari runtime. So here we can see where we're, we're pulling in Tari runtime Rai. So Rai is the thing that's doing the messages between the windows and whatnot. And that's probably why it's the thing that's doing the plugin.
All right, so. What is your deal? Goofy kitty. All right, so. It seems we. If we close the main window, is that going to actually close the second window? <laughs> I don't know if the window is actually tied to the process running. I feel like I remember something about the main window having to stick around. All right, so the main window started, main window closed, secondary window, yep. Secondary window moved, but then everything just closed and it ended. So I think we need that second one running, or that, that main window running. Um, So there's a window.app handle. Can I hand this to it? I don't know if that's gonna work. So window is a window right event loop. So we've got an app handle. What else do we have as options on the window? Available monitors, close, close dev tools, config. We can emit, that would be for the events. Environment variables, the scope of the file system for it. We did the, oh, there is already get it window, which fetched a single window from the manager. Returns the native handle that is used by this window. Hmm. Okay. No method name handle font for structure window. There's a menu handle. Menu handle gets a handle to the window menu. I don't think that's what we want. Opens the dialog to print the contents of the window. <laughs> Scale factor always on top. So we can change some parts of the window after it's been created. Set title. With WebView, executes the closure accessing the platform's WebView handle. Okay. So there was this one, it returns the native handle that is used by this window. I don't know if this is going to work either. I don't know if any of these are gonna work. Um, we could probably start looking at what's on this. And this is only implementing that new, which expects an app handle. So if we look here, I'm guessing the only option here is going to be create get window.
Yeah, expected struct app handle found enum result. Yep, so that's not going to work either. So I think we have to do the app handle. And it seems like the only thing we can do is create new. We can get a window. Fetch a single window by its label. So once we would have that, we, with this window, are we able to like edit the context window? There's a window.app handle, interesting. We do a window dot tap handle. I don't know that it's gonna like that either. It's kind of feeling like we can only create windows. Which to be fair, I mean this is like the first time I've been implementation, so So let's start it up. It didn't replace, which makes sense because we're still in calling create window. And there's we can get window, we can create window. There's not like a replace. So here's a windows. Um I don't know if this context is should we do print line? Print line. I don't know if this context is specific to these gluten windows. So this should give us a print of the app state windows. Oh, double quotes, yep, okay. Cannot be formatted using that because it doesn't implement debug. Help is implemented for hash map. Help the trait standard format debug is implemented for hash map. Okay. Um, can we do debug? I don't know if that's going to work. I can never remember the debug one. I always remember the pentaline. Cannot find macro debug in this scope. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess it's not that big of a deal. It feels like right now we can only, we, we're, we have the expectation that we can only have, we have a main window and it is a web view. And we can create other windows and those other windows could be EGUI window, or it could be a web view, for instance. Um, which isn't the end of the world, because I mean, we can do something like um, glute window dot maximize. So, like, if we're thinking in terms of like games. 
the like start or game runner could be a web view and when you when this starts up we hide the main window and then we maximize the gluten window maximized so like a size it's a max window size oh resizable false no we're fine with it being resizable so center and then maximize we should get a full screen of that um if we could do full screen too but i think that would be weird weird to show on stream um it doesn't actually go full screen or maximize get out can't hear my mouth interesting <laughs> and look at that so something is funky there it's just constantly re-rendering it to the same size um so i'm not sure what is doing that there might be something like this hard-coded so that's the frame window size yeah i don't know if that's required And I'm presuming that combination of resizable true, true is mostly just changing the handle. So you can, Oh, Hey, there we go. All right. So it is full screen or it is maximized rather. So now we're able to freeform adjust it. The, so like that, that, I mean, that's a potential reasonable use case. Like you could use the web view, the main window web view is like the launcher into a game or something like that. Um, and have secondary windows to spawn up the the game or whatnot. But it doesn't seem like you can replace the main web view. We'll, uh, we'll look into it. We'll, we'll see if we can figure out any more information on that, I think. Um, I can uh, ask some, I can ask Lucas, Lucas and, uh, and company to see if they are aware. Um, but it seems like we can only have one native window. It seems like we can, and it can't be the main one, but yeah, this was pretty cool. Um, I'm excited to see more of what happens with these different type of windows. I think we can hit some interesting use cases where we can use, um, like it, it would, it would be cool to do web view and like multiple things in the same window. I don't know if that's possible. Um, but even having diff windows of different types is kind of, a, a opens up potential use cases. So i'm happy happy to see it evolve especially as it moves into mobile um i think the plan right now is in v2 of tori to release the mobile um so mobile when mobile's ready it would come in v2 and that's that's going to be like the kickoff and the moving into v2 of tori which would enable ios and android um i think that's all that's planned But being able to do different type of windows in that situation too, I think is going to be inter. There, there will be many interesting use cases there. Um, and moving into V two, I think is going to potentially make it easier to do these sort of implementations, because there's the option to do breaking changes, which I wonder if some of the issues that are existing as far as the you know main web view and whatnot are sort of hard coded ex expectations. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it evolve. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for chatting. Have a happy Friday. Yeah, keep on tinkering. See you next time. Bye.